Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This gospel today is one that frequently I have encouraged people to read over the years, including myself. And we do certainly live in an age of anxiety, an age of stress. People are worried about everything and don't seem to trust that God actually is going to take care of them. And so, we have examples throughout the scriptures, throughout the saints, of why this is obviously not the way we should be. We have, of course, the story of Mother Gabriela in India, who someone asked her one day, why is everybody so anxious? Why is everybody so stressed out about money and things? Do they, do they not have faith? She says they have an absolute lack of confidence. Because, as I've said before, as she says before, that there's nothing that does not come from God, is not allowed by God, and therefore she says she accepts everything with great peace and tranquility, whether good or bad, because God knows what He's doing and has always taken care of her before. That should be our way. Of course, we have other examples. I think of Elder Thaddeus, who talked about how much he enjoyed as a young monk looking out the window and seeing the rabbits running around in the moonlight playing, and how they were safe. They were fine. They had the food they needed. God took care of them. Often out of my window at night, I can see the same thing. And it's a wonderful thing. One of the things that really brings me joy in life. Because you see those things, and you see things the way God intended them. Because He loves us every bit as much as He does those rabbits. I can assure you, probably more. And yet, we fret, and we worry. But they don't. Think of Elder Cleopa. This man came to him because the local authorities kept harassing him. He had divorced a woman of some means, and she kept, and her family kept getting the police to harass him. Well, one day one of the police come to him and say that after five days you're going into prison and you're not coming out. Of course, he runs in terror to Elder Cleopa, and Elder Cleopa says, Why are you worrying? It won't happen. In three days it will be over. Well, in three days the policeman who was harassing him was in prison himself, and it never came to pass. So he told him, why do you fear? Why do you have fear of anything? All these things are in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands. So why do we fear? We hear the scriptures today. If our eye be single, if our eye be focused, the eyes of our heart be focused on God all the time, there is no need ever for any fear or any worry, or any anxiety, because God indeed does clothe the flowers and the plants. You see beautiful flowers outside, the ones out the window right here are beautiful. And Solomon was not bedecked as those, but yet we fret about clothing, absolute silliness, and vanity usually. We worry about what we're we going to eat all the time, and we eat like no society in history has eaten really. Why do we worry about this? People have lived off bread of water and bread and water have been fine. And God gives us far more than that. Far more than that. We need to appreciate the good that God has given us. Because if we seek first the kingdom of heaven is righteous, all these things will be added unto us. That doesn't mean we're going to eat like kings. We're not going to wear soft clothing as we heard with John the Baptist yesterday. But we will have God's mercy and God's grace covering us. So there's nothing to worry about. Several of you I've mentioned the last few days a thought that came to my mind recently talking to someone, and it comes from Mark Emanuel Zacharias. And he talks about all of us have really an Esau and a Jacob going on in us. Esau is that one that wants his satisfaction now. That part of our brain we're praying is about there going, you need to go do this, you need to go do that. When you finish this, you can indulge yourself, whatever else he's saying. Because he wants his pot of stew now. He doesn't care about his birthright or the long-term consequences. He wants it now. Whereas Jacob, of course, didn't have much ground to stand on. He, you know, stole the birthright and ran away. So they need to reconcile with each other, to be whole. And Jacob knows this. And so Jacob decides to return, but he knows in advance I cannot defeat Esau. Esau will kill me. He's far more powerful than I am. And we know that part of our brain, too, that wants what it wants now, that makes our passions come up all the time, that we keep falling, falling, and falling because we, he beats us up. He takes it away. 
But that's not what happens here in the story. Jacob comes, he sends people ahead, feeling the situation out a little bit. And he comes down to the Jabbok River and stands by him, and Esau falls on his shoulders and weeps. Because Jacob came in humility. It wasn't because he gave in to Esau. It wasn't because he gave in to his negative thoughts and his passions and his want for immediate gratification. Whatsoever. He came in humility and accepted that he was real. And that is the way it should be with us. Because that thought in our head is real. We're going to have those thoughts, probably until we die, the ones that are prevailing over us. Because the devil knows how to work them. The one that's lying and they're telling Esau, you need it now. You need it now. God's not going to take care of you. But if we approach it with acceptance, yes, you're there. I acknowledge you're there, and you're part of me, but we're not doing that today. We're serving God. We're doing what God wants. Then that part of our brain can fall on us and leave, and be part with us. Because it will pass, that thought, if we just give it a few moments with, you know, gentle Lord Jesus Christ of mercy. Not fighting, because he saw we'll beat you up, Period. But then we have that place in our lives of the same thing, where we want what we want. Now, we see the two possibilities here, and I can have my, my stew or whatever it is I want, the feelings, the emotions, the indulgences, the lusts, whatever it may be, the anger. But there's Jesus over there in the desert. That doesn't look very appealing to us. That's hard. There's not much consolation there. It's not what we wanted. And most of the time, at least in my experience, God is always doing something new. Every moment of every day is new. There's no same liturgy. There's no same event. There's no same day. There's no same relationship with any of you. It's always different every day because God is working in us and moving. And he's a mystery. And he surprises. But God says, yes, you, you can go ahead and have what that liar is telling you. But he is lying. He will lift you up and make you feel exalted right now and happy, you think, for a moment. You'll indulge your pleasure, your passions, whatever it is. In the meantime, he's weakening you and making you sick. You're losing your strength. You're becoming a shell of the person God intended you to be. But if you want me, I'm in that desert. And that's what I'm wanting. And walk with me. Through all the trials and tribulations, the loneliness, and what you think is not there for you, and I will feed you. I will give you strength. As I did John the Baptist, he was clothed and he ate the plant shoots and the honey, and he was fine. More than fine, the greatest of those born among women. A great prophet, because he trusted in God in everything he did. So why do we worry about tomorrow? Why do we worry about whether God's going to take care of us? That doesn't mean we shouldn't work. Indeed, we should work and do our efforts and use the gifts God gave us. But we just look at the scriptures. There was no food for the 4,000. There was no food for the 5,000. He fed them. There was no food in the wilderness. God sent down manna. They didn't see quail until they couldn't eat another bite of it because they complained. But he still gave them what they wanted. God brought forth water out of a rock. God continues to give us everything we need. God comes and lays his hands on the little girl. God comes and lays his hands and lets the woman with the issue of blood touch the garment. God heals from a distance the centurion servant. And he continues to give us what we want. And as you know, there are countless stories, countless stories in the lives of the saints of monks who thought they had nothing, and there was that darn abbot again giving away all the food, and he came back double the next day because they were faithful and served and loved. They didn't care what they had. They weren't exorbitant. They didn't spend everything they had. They just gave to the poor. But yet God still took care of them. It's my experience when people give to the church and actually tithe and more. My experience is God always Manifold blesses that, always. It's nothing to fear. It's trust, because it's God's money anyway. And how can we think that we know better than God? Well, God's not going to take care of me. I say I want God to love me, but 
I've got to fix this situation now. I've got to change everything. I can't possibly go to church. I've got to do a little bit extra today to make my life the way I want my life to be. And he's over there in the desert, by the way, so I really don't want to follow him. That's far. But in the desert is where we have the proverbial desert. This is where we have Mary of Egypt. This is where we have John the Baptist. This is where we have St. Anthony. This is where we have all the saints, the saints of the northern wilderness, the saints of Romania and Serbia, the ones in America, the ones who escaped the fear of the world and were willing to take whatever trials Christ brought on them that they might be raised up with him and be filled with his Holy Spirit. May we learn from this day not to worry about a thing. There's nothing to worry about because God loves you more than flowers and God loves you more than the birds of the air. And God loves every one of you more than you can possibly, possibly imagine. There's nothing you do bad that makes God turn away from you. We turn away from God. When we do wrong, God wraps his arms around us and says, there, there. Come, follow me again and repent. And offers us everything that he has in his mercy. And we learn that today there is nothing to worry about because God's treasure is always with us if we just but open our arms to it. Amen. Amen. Amen.